Yeah, hi, it's uh, Mark here again. Um, it's been about one year since my last video vlog, and uh, I thought it would be about time to update uh, since I promised to do one about a week after my last vlog. Uh, so, living in a year is probably quite a long time. Anyway, uh, there has been quite a lot happening since then, um, so I thought I'd take this opportunity just to kind of uh, yeah, make the video log and maybe get down some thoughts uh, about what's happened over the last year. Um, I haven't written anything down, so just talking uh, ad lib, so we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, last August I had my uh, right lung removed, um, or two thirds of my right lung, um, which had three tumours in it. Um, that operation was successful, uh, even though yeah, I took some time to recover because I had a MRSA infection. Took uh, took a few weeks for the wound to heal. I had to have uh, your daily dressing changes, etc. But it was fine in the end. Um, yeah, so I uh, went back to work um, at uh, yeah in August and uh, end of August, and um, it was well. Just happily working, and then had my routine scan in January, which showed uh, that cancer had in fact come back to my remaining. Uh, lung and a little bit of my right lung was left um, so by all accounts yeah there's quite a spattering of tumours now that have uh, you know kind of grown across my lungs and also in my uh, lymphatic vessel that's in that same area as my lungs um, so not great news I found that out in January um, something just fell over <laughs> In the kitchen, uh, found that out in January, and um, yeah, I um, started. Well, they told me there was not much they could do apart from chemotherapy, and um, I started a course of uh, oxaliplatin uh, with capecitabine tablets and Avastin in end of January, um, which seemed to stabilise the. Uh, the growth of the tumours up until about Easter when I had my uh, scan, uh, the, the routine three monthly scan and it showed, yeah, showed it stabilised but I wasn't coping with the oxaliplatin so the oncologist decided to to stop oxaliplatin really at my request um, and yeah since then so now that was kind of April time now we're at the beginning of August so it's, we're just about three and a half months um, I've just been on Avastin with Cape Cytopine tablets um, and that's actually been unsuccessful so there has been further growth in the tumours in my lungs uh, since I've been on that treatment so yeah last week I had those results and kind of been given several choices it's up to me really what I want to do um, one is to not have any more chemo at all one is to just have a break for another three months or uh, or just to maybe go back on oxaliplatin or another drug called Irinotecan. And I really have been um, weighing up in my mind what to do. Because, uh, you know, the oxaliplatin and Irinotecan drugs, they really, they really do take it out of you uh, and make you into a complete zombie. And that's how I was at the early part of this year. The last three months I haven't been like that. I've been much more energised, able to live my life much more normally. Um, so going back onto any of those drugs is really a difficult decision because really I have to choose up way up do I want to have quality of life versus length of life uh, and it's been just been chewing over in my head wondering what to do and actually I had up until really the week, this weekend just passed kind of decided I wouldn't have more chemo and I would just let it run its course now with choosing quality of life um, but actually um, the last couple of days I've actually been doing a bit of reflection and well, I spend my, most of my life reflecting but I've been do, doing a bit of reflecting um, and thinking well I'm not going to take oxaliplatin but if I take irinotecan you know maybe that will stabilise the drugs stabilise the tumours growth and that will uh, you know, give me more time here and it's not necessarily about having good quality time but about just being here 
for James, you know, because he's, if I, even if I'm ill, then I'll still be here for James. He'll still have a dad. Because if I die early, he doesn't have a dad. So, even if I'm ill, yeah. Whereas, yeah, great, it'd be great if I could just be uh, normal. But if I'm ill, I'm still here. So, uh, fucking nice. <coughs> yeah, if I'm if I, I'm still here, then James has got a dad. But if I'm not here, he doesn't have a dad. So it doesn't matter how sick I am, I'm still around, and he still gets to know who I am. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it now. You know, I'm wondering, is it selfish of me just to say I don't want more drugs? You know? It's a really uh, difficult decision to make. Probably the most difficult decision anyone would have to ever make. So, that's where I am at the moment. So yeah, the prognosis, uh, not particularly great. The uh, doctor had originally said, this back in January, you know, similar ex experience of similar cases, he would suggest that someone may have one to three years to live um, in my situation. Uh, last week, you know, depending on treatment options, I kind of revised that down a bit to maybe 12 to 18 months. So uh, it's a little bit difficult to um, contemplate as well. So uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be dead in 18 months time, depending on what treatment I take. Uh, so just need to uh, live strong for now. So yeah, that's me and uh, yeah, catch up soon.